Welcome to another episode of CFI Deeper Dives, where each week we take some time to talk to you about the finance and economic topics that matter to us this week. Earlier this week, I was in line to get my morning cup of coffee, and I couldn't help but overhear the conversation ahead of me. It was about the R word, recession. And it was about when is it happening? Why do people keep on talking about it? What's going on in the economy? When is this recession going to arrive? So there are lots of differing opinions about the global economy and the state that we're in today. But one thing I think we can all agree on is that things are getting a little messy. Over the past 12 months, the U.S. Federal Reserve has taken unprecedented action to rapidly raise interest rates in order to stabilize prices and fight the soaring inflation that we're seeing today. So now that we've all suffered through a year of rapidly rising interest rates, the question is, is the Fed making and seeing any progress towards its target goal of getting inflation down to 2%? Well, unfortunately, the U.S. Department of Labor released their latest CPI reading yesterday, and it showed that inflation turned higher to start 2023. And we can attribute that to rising costs in shelter, gas, and fuel prices. So CPI, if you aren't familiar, stands for Consumer Price Index, and it measures the monthly change in price paid for an essential basket of goods and services by U.S. consumers and it is one of the most popular measures of inflation and deflation. So that key measure of inflation, CPI, rose 0.5% in the month of January to start the year of 2023. That's a 50 basis point increase, and this brings us to an annual gain of 6.4%. And now the question is, does this seem like a far cry from the 2% that the Fed is targeting And how will that feel for you, me, and the economy? Well, let's analogize this scenario into something that you and I are likely very familiar with, and probably more so in the past year or two. Let's say that you wake up and you're running a high fever. You take your temperature and it's higher than you've ever seen it before. So what do you do? You decide to go into your medicine cabinet and see what you can take. And you see Tylenol. You start off by taking one to extra strength Tylenol, and you wait a few hours. You check your temperature again, and it hasn't moved. You take another one. You wait a few hours, you check your temperature, and it still hasn't moved. So you take another one, and you do this until you reach your max daily dosage of acetaminophen. Now, your temperature might have gone down ever so slightly, but all of a sudden, you're starting to get a stomach ache, and it's likely coming from the fact that you just took way too much acetaminophen. In this scenario, That fever you're running, that is inflation to our economy. Your medicine cabinet, that's the central bank. That's the U.S. Federal Reserve. And that Tylenol that you're taking, those are interest rates. That stomachache that you just got from taking way too much Tylenol and its negative side effects can be seen as the economic recession. The economic recession that comes before the inflation starts to come down and in essence your fever starts to fall. Higher interest rates, that fever directly impacts things like household finances. So for example, if you have a variable rate mortgage, a time of rising interest rates is going to change the way that you budget and you manage your cash flows because your mortgage payments would be so much higher. Now, on the corporate side of things, it's going to impact corporate earnings in the sense that when companies have to pay more to borrow capital, it's going to change their hiring decisions. It's also going to impact the way that they look at their capital structure. And ultimately, this contributes to overall employment numbers. It also causes investors to look for places where there's more dependable rates of return. So for example, investors will typically flock to bonds, but it also depends what currencies they're using to purchase all of those bonds. And if they all flock at once, it greatly impacts the value of that currency. And it's this giant melting pot of economic events that eventually causes an economic slowdown. And when that slowdown is significant enough, we end up in an economic recession. 